Hello there everyone. In this HTML5 and JavaScript lesson, we will demonstrate usage of the new date and time form input types, as well as tying them to JavaScript for your Ajax processing needs. This is the finished product of what we will achieve in this video lesson. So if the user clicks in the date field, they're going to get a nice calendar pop-up that they can choose their date from very easily. They can go through the months and the years and choose the exact date they need. For date time local is a similar type thing, but it adds the time to the value that would get passed through your form. And date time is similar to date time local, but it adds UTC. And you also have a month selector, so when they go down into the interface and they go through the months, they can select the whole month. So it's 2012, the fourth month. If I was to pick May, that's the fifth month. So that's the value that gets passed to your form. Then we have just the standalone time selector, and then we have a week selector. So you can go through the months of any year and grab a whole week and then they can pass that through the form if you want to allow the user to select whole weeks at a time then when we press submit we process all of those values using JavaScript and you can use Ajax to pass these values to PHP and save them in a MySQL database or whatever and I'm gonna give you guys links to a reference to a nice Ajax post tutorial that is integrated with a PHP script already so you can see each of the values for those six fields are listed right here and that's what you pass through your form processing. Let's once again begin with the basic structure of an HTML5 web page and build our tiny little application. Let's go under that H2 tag, which just is a header, and I'm going to type in date colon space, and I'm going to put an input tag, and the input type is going to be date. The name is going to be equal to field1 as well as the ID attribute, field1. This way, when you process your form with PHP the normal way without Ajax, you can pick up the variable value of that field using the name attribute in the post variables. And if you're using Ajax, actually you can also pick up this value using JavaScript using the name. Because you can get element by ID using JavaScript, or you can get element by name. But I'm just throwing them both in there so it'll be a little more versatile for you guys. Now I'll close off this input tag, and I'll add a couple of break tags. Let's make sure we put in the closing slash there for the break tags. Okay. Okay, now if I save this file and I go up to File, Preview, and Browser, let's preview this in Opera because Opera is going to render this thing the best. The other browsers you might attempt to use to render this with might not display it yet, but come 2014, all browsers should display it because HTML5 would be a web standard. So you have to pick the browsers that you're going to test these scripts with as you're developing with them before 2014 comes because before 2014 comes some browsers just won't render it the way you think it should and you won't see the new magic of HTML5 at all okay so the browser that you test these things with is very important at this point in time okay 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 now that that things rendering correctly I'm gonna add five more fields that are gonna be similar for intaking date and time much like the the demonstration that we had in the beginning that showed you the finished product of what you were going to be creating. So what we'll do is just name this one field 2, field 3, field 4, field 5, field 6, same over here. Field 2, field 3, field 4, field 5, field 6. Now all you have to do is change the type. This one is date time hyphen local. This one is date time and that would be the UTC version. Then we have the month selector for allowing the user to select a month. Then we have then we have the time selector and then we also have the week selector to allow the user to select a week from that little calendar that pops up there. You can just change the labels of these here to correspond with those. So here you can just put week, so on and so forth as you go up. Okay, so now we have all our fields in place and they have a proper name and ID attribute for each one and we've given them the proper type attribute which is the most important part of what we're doing right now now the last thing in the HTML that we're going to add is a button now what this button is going to do you can see this is the button type of input so that will render a button on the screen and what it's going to do is in the on click event of that button when the user clicks it we're going to run a JavaScript function called process data which I'm going to write right now in just a second and I'll show you what that is comprised of so on click we process data for each of these six fields so we can send all of these fields that we desire as arguments through that function 
and that function will process all those fields, get the values, and we can post to Ajax. Or we can just post the form, have the form be submit after we check all of those fields and validate things. Whatever processes you want to run in JavaScript. I'll just show you how to access those values in JavaScript so you have them to play with. Okay, let's go up into the head tag and apply our JavaScript to the page. So we'll open a script tag and close it right here. Now we'll construct a simple function that will pick up all of those values when the user clicks the submit button down there. So we have function process data. Remember that's the same name as the function in the on click event. So this function executes when this button is clicked. And you see these fields, these six fields, they get picked up as arguments to the function right here. So F1, F2, all the way through F6, you can access those fields and values within those fields using JavaScript. Okay, let's add the lines that pick up those field values and put them in a variable name that we can more easily use within our script. So you see there we have var v1 through v6. So value 1 through value 6. And we get those values by saying var v1 is equal to document.getElementById f1, which is this first argument, which is essentially field 1. And you do that for all 6. So you have the values packed up into nice little variables right there that you can then write an alert to yourself to see those values. So let's pop that alert in right here. And I also added a couple of code comments for you guys there. So you can see how we're using alert in JavaScript to pop up a little window that just for testing purposes is going to show you the values of all those fields. And the backslash n is gives you a line break in your uh, little pop-up dialog that comes up in JavaScript. Now the code comments are you can use Ajax and PHP to send the values to your server storage mechanisms. Like if you're using MySQL or maybe a flat file storage mechanism, you can send these values to that to process the form using Ajax, which is a more modern technique of form processing. And if you need an Ajax with PHP integrated video tutorial, you can go to developphp.com, this link right here. Or you can probably just go into the search bar, developphp.com, and type in Ajax Tutorial. And I know it's definitely sitting in the JavaScript video tutorial section of DevelopPHP. See, if I'm at DevelopPHP and I go down to the video tutorials sections, JavaScript and jQuery, it's right in there. See, Ajax post to PHP file. If you need to learn Ajax and PHP communication, there you go, right there. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's go ahead and save this. Control S and file preview and browser opera so I can select all these dates or whatever fill in all of these fields and then submit and then there's all the values within JavaScript ready to go for your form processing if you want to use Ajax and if you just want to use regular form type mechanism you put a form tag in here opening and closing form tag and make sure you supply it with the action attribute to your PHP script that's going to process all the data and then that way you can process all this information in the normal old form type scenario without Ajax. But if you want to use Ajax, I got it all set up for you right there. Go. Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed that lesson and we have a few more along these lines of form input mechanisms and controls, selectors and things like that coming up real soon. I'm going to do a few today actually.